What's up tubers? Teo here, Simplistic Fishing. Coming back at you tonight for another lake breakdown. I had a request for Lake Bass Trip down close to the Central Texas, kind of Austin area. Uh, so figured I'd go take a look at it. This is a power plant lake, so very, very interesting. Not a lot of stuff we could find on Google Earth, but all kinds of offshore stuff to go take a look at. Let's jump into it. Like we always do before we jump into a lake, the first thing we do is we always go out to the Texas Park and Wildlife Fishing page and we look to see what kind of information we can find out about this lake. So in this case, Lake Bastrop is in Bastrop County near the town of Bastrop. Hopefully I'm saying that name right. Uh, surface area is 906 acres. The maximum depth is 60 feet, so it's fairly deep. Uh, it was impounded in 1964. You can see here under the water conditions, the conservation pool elevation is 450 feet, and the fluctuation is rarely more than one to two feet. So this one's going to be a very unique breakdown because we're not even going to look at Google Earth because Google Earth did not provide us anything. There was no fluctuation on this lake, and there's not a lot of vegetation around the lake or anything like that, that not vegetation, but lay downs, rock piles, stuff like that, that we could see from Google Earth. So there was no advantage to looking at this lake on Google Earth. So we'll skip that and we're gonna go right into the offshore stuff. Now you will see here, it says clarity, normally clear to slightly stained. Um, it is controlled by the Lower Colorado River Authority. And then you look down here, for aquatic vegetation, it says marine naiad, southern naiad, pondweed species, hydrilla, and coontail. So there is a lot of hydrilla in this lake, and that is one of the primary reasons why it was really, really hard from a Google Earth standpoint to, to really see anything. Uh, when you look at the predominant fish species, you've got largemouth bass, catfish, and sunfish. When you go into the lake records and look here for the largemouth bass, uh, it's actually 9.98, so not huge, but still a pretty good pretty good size. What's cool here though is they also have the Guadalupe bass too. So this is going to be a lot of fun fishing uh, for sure. So if we go down, we look a little bit more. You can see here it's a Lake Bastrop is a high quality bass lake. It's been heavily stocked with Florida largemouth bass. However, it is not noted for producing trophy size fish. Most of those are caught are from a range from two to five pounds. So uh, interesting, but basically just means, look, you can go out here and probably just have a heyday catching some fish in this lake. You can see here the species for largemouth bass is excellent. Catfish is good, crappie and sunfish are a little bit lower. And then as you go further down, you're really gonna see some good information in regards to this lake about really how to fish it. And right off the bat, you can tell why Google Earth wasn't, wasn't good for me. As it says right here that the lake is a classic structure fishing lake. Well-defined creek channels, humps, drop-offs provide perfect structure for the anglers. So you'll definitely wanna be using your electronics. It goes in, it talks a little bit more about the different types of uh, fishing you can do during the different seasons and things like that. But really the, the biggest thing here is that you're gonna to need to be uh, learn how to fish offshore. This is gonna be a key one to go learn to fish offshore. It'll be a great one to go learn to fish offshore because it sounds like you get a lot of activity in this lake, you can catch a lot of fish. So if you're one of those that's been struggling for offshore fishing, this may be the lake, if you're close to it, this may be the lake to actually get you over your offshore uh, hangover and get you on some fish and kind of show you how they set up. So let's go ahead and switch over here. We're gonna move over to the Navionics mobile boating app and we're gonna look at this lake from a contour perspective instead of Google Earth and see what we can find out there. Let's go. Well, here we are on Lake Bastrop, and I'm using the Navionics boating app. So if you're curious what app I'm using here to get these contours, that is what I'm using. It's one of my favorite ones that's out there. There's not very many lakes that they don't have contours on. Um, in fact, on this one, a uh, smaller lake, but it's got plenty of contours as well. So let's go ahead and just start here on the lower end, and we'll talk about all these different offshore spots that are out here. And I'm sure there's going to be some spots I miss, um, but what I'm doing is I'm basically just, I'm, I'm taking this as if it was the first time I was going to the lake and these are the spots that I would go go take a look at based on just what I'm seeing on the map. So let's go ahead and look at it here from the South Trail Cove. That's where we're going to start. 
When we get down in here, I really like this area right in here. Notice how it has a nice deep little cut in. So there should be a pretty good ledge right here. And this lake is just filled with hydrilla. When we look at it on Google Earth, you'll see all the hydrilla everywhere. And so I, I would guess that there should be some type of a ledge there where the hydrilla breaks off and you get a nice little defined ledge. So you definitely wanna look there. Also here, it looks like there's a little channel that comes back in here. I'm not sure what this is, but it definitely looks like you've got a nice drop that happens right around in here, right really close to the edge of that point. All right, let's move on up, see what else we find. Again, this is another one of those. You could say this is a creek channel swing. Um, you could also say that this is a ledge. You could say it's a drop off as well, um, but it's all those things. Here's the creek channel. Notice how it's a little bit deeper here than everywhere else. And then notice that big turn. Well, anytime you get those big turns, they love to set up in those areas. And again, if there's hydrilla there, you're gonna have a break somewhere in the hydrilla where that creek channel is. And that is gonna make it just a primo, primo spot to go look at. All right, so as we move up here, let's go a little bit further getting a little bit further north but this spot here i really liked it as well it's not much as much of like a creek channel swing or anything like that but it's one heck of a ledge it goes from 20 foot to 34 foot so 14 foot drop right in that area you may also just want to do some scanning all around here also right in here notice there's a really big drop going on right here in this area and even here in this little cut pretty much anywhere around this creek channel if you're going to fish, you're going to find some kind of fish relating out to those creek channels. And a lot of times, like I said, if it's a hydrilla lake, a lot of times that creek channel will be kind of the dividing line of where that hydrilla is at. So let's keep moving up. There's lots of different people that have put, uh, you know, fishing and diving hotspots up here. You notice it's all hydrilla and they're catching with spooks and frogs and all kinds of good stuff. This lake just looks absolutely amazing. But let's go ahead and look up here. We're gonna come up here, here's where the power plant is. And I don't even know if I mentioned that because they didn't talk about it on the Texas Park and Wildlife page, but this is a power plant lake. I don't know if the power plant is still active or not. We'll have to wait for some people to put some comments in here. But if it is still active, this is primo time to be going in October, November, December. Um, that's all kind of pre-spawn for these power plant lakes before they start spawning in January and February. So right now in October would be the time to be uh, hitting this lake for sure. So let's keep moving up, see what else we can find. Here Here's the channel that comes out of the power plant, right? So you've got really good ledges here all along this channel that you could check out. Of course, you've got all these points too, and I haven't even talked that much about points, but here's a nice point here you could fish. And then over here, you have this point that comes out as well, and you've got a really nice little, uh, I don't know if that's a creek channel or a ditch, let's look. That could be some kind of a creek channel there. Kind of hard to tell, but it's definitely a nice point with a good drop with a nice little ditch around it. Then we're gonna move up here. We're gonna go out more away from the power plant. We're gonna go here more mid lake. And we're out here on mid lake. Just a couple things to look at here. One, you've got this little ditch that cuts in. Notice how you see it's super deep here, 51 foot, and then it cuts in right in here. A lot of times right in those little cut-ins, those are great places to find fish. So uh, I call them ditches. Some people call them gouges. Some people call them cut-ins, whatever you want to call them. I just think that those little cut-ins can be really good spots. And then as we move over here, I mean, this point right here, you can tell, I mean, I, I could, if the, if the points weren't here from the from the community, I could have told you this was gonna be a really good point. And more than likely it's probably the like the community hole on this lake because it it's a nice big flat point. It's got hydrilla all over it. I'm sure there's a break in the hydrilla somewhere <clears throat> out here. It may be way far out here, depending on how deep the hydrilla gets. But if you can get up on the edge of this and find right where that drop is, like right there where that purple fish is, that's a perfect little spot because more than likely that's where the hydrilla stops, right where that break is. And kind of the same thing over here. You've got this little channel that comes through here. So right around those breaks are typically gonna be right where the grass stops and where the fish love to collect. So there, there, and even on the backside, I didn't put a marker here, but also right in here off this backside. All right, let's move on up. Let's see what else. We talked about this ditch over here. This is another one of those little cut-ins. It's not, a, it's not a, a river channel or anything like that. It's just part of this little cove, but notice how it cuts in really good and it gives you a nice little drop that's right here on this side that you can look at. We've got the same types of things up here. We've got a couple different of those ditches I was telling you about. Um, one's right here. So you're gonna get those ledges all around those points that are out there. And then if you get back in here, you know, you could be up in pretty shallow water on both sides of you, but right in here would be right where they would collect. So you could look in there, in here, and in here as well. These are all very similar as they come in and make a nice little cut in right into those flats. And right in there, man, look at that. 
that drop right there goes from like 15 foot to 24 foot so nine foot drop in there so some really good stuff right in here and then over here on the corner you got the same thing this one doesn't look as good as all three of these but you never know that could be the best one and then you can't see it because that little marker was in the way but you got a nice little little point that's right here too that you could definitely fish around this lake looks awesome uh, now we're going to get up here we're closer towards the dam we're just going to get out in the middle of the lake and as we get out in the middle of the lake here, this is like a huge, like, I'm just going to call it like a huge flat that comes out that has a hump on it and all kinds of good stuff. And it's right there by the dam. So it's, it's very, really close. The dam's right here and here's where these spots are. You've got two humps. You've got right here, a nice hump right here, a nice hump right here. And then if you look really closely at these contours, you've got some really nice little breaks right here. This one comes almost all the way up to the point. So you're going to have a nice little break right in there. And then this one over here, there's a stump or something over here. But if you look in these areas, if I zoom in a little bit better, you'll see where we've got some nice little points out here, but a really good little ledge going on right here, 17 to 32 feet. So something's going on right here around in this area and then also right here in this area. All right, so I'm gonna pull this back and we're gonna move up a little bit more. And now let's see what we find up in this area. So up here, we've got a nice point again, a you know, really good point to fish around. You got a nice point over here that's got a really nice drop too. Uh, so really like this area. And then if we move up a little bit further, we've got a really nice drop going on right here in this area. Let me show you this, cause you'll see it a lot better when I zoom in, but look at that drop. You're at 40, almost 50 feet here and you're at 20 something feet up here. So huge drop, big drop going on right there in that area. And then as you move back, just some key things that I saw uh, coming up in here. One, uh, there's an old road bed up here. I didn't mark it, but somebody there did say that there's an old road bed, so you may want to check that out. I can't see it. Navy Onyx doesn't show it's there, so I can't really mark it you know, with confidence unless I were to go out there and fish this lake, which I haven't, but I would love to. Uh, and then moving down here, we've also got a secondary point. It's got some flooded timber back here. I could see this being juice back here in this spot. As long as it's not choked out with, uh, with hydrilla, that could really be a good spot. All right, so let's move on down here. And if you're, if you're new to kind of looking at maps, um, this, it probably doesn't stand out as much as it does to some of us that have seen a ton of maps. But we got a nice creek channel that's coming right through here. If you see my little hand going down here, this is the creek channel. And then it gets kind of funky right in here, but then it looks like it bails out and goes a little bit further down and stays down in this area. So anywhere around these channels are going to be really good places to look at, and especially if you can find the bends. So right here you have a creek channel swing right in here. So right in there is going to be a really good spot. Down here, um, there's actually a couple spots right in there too. I'm not sure what, what they marked there, but there could be a ledge. Well, the ledge is actually right there. Um, and then over here, you've got kind of the same thing. You've got this point that comes out that produces a really good ledge right in here as well. So I like both of those, and both of those are creek channel swings. And then as we move up here, well, actually, let's go down here real quick and see what else we had down here. Down here, we've got a really good drop, right? A really good ledge going on down here in this little spot right here. I like that. That looks really good. And then back here, you kind of have the same thing, but you got a little ditch that cuts out. So you got a nice little rounded little point that's around in there with a nice little cutout in that spot. And I like that area as well. Again, another spot where the, you know, the grass is going to come out and then kind of stop once it hits that break. Now, one spot I didn't put on here that I didn't mark, but it's, it just kind of jumped out to me here. Actually, there's two different spots here you may want to look at. Uh, one would be this little point right here that comes off. Notice the little flat top that it has. So this would probably be a lot of hydrilla and then somewhere right in here, it's gonna break. Well, that's pretty close to that turn. So maybe right in here. And then also might wanna check up in here where this cuts in and gets close to that flat. Maybe looking like right around in there somewhere. All right, those aren't like primo spots, but this one would probably be, this one down here would probably have more potential than that one, at least in my opinion. All right, so we talked about these. These are the big ledges that are out there, right? So you got some really good ledges there. You've got some interesting stuff coming up here. If you just follow these little channels, this is kind of a, a secondary channel that as you move on up, you're going to see here, you've got a really good little turn here, a creek channel swing here. You've got a nice little ledge going on right in this area. And then you've got a nice little secondary point that's back here. And then if we look on this side, again, a really big ledge going on all along on this side. Let's zoom in here and show you. You can see here it gets super deep, 32 feet. 
and this is what probably 15 or so feet so you've got a nice drop right around in here right around the edge around this this point that sticks out here then we're going to move down we've just got a few more to, to cover here and then we're going to switch over look at it on google earth real quick before we finish up but again a lot of these are going to be creek channel swings so right here you got a creek channel swing here as well what i mean by that is it's a turn or a bend you'll hear people call it a bend but this is a bend so anytime you find those bends they're good another creek channel swing here this is a little sub sub you know arm of the creek channel that comes off but it hits here and makes a really good swing notice the little contours how tight they are right there that means you've got a pretty nice little drop going on there uh, if we move back in here i didn't see too much back in here um, to mark for you guys you know, but again without being there i'm just really looking at the contours but up here this looks like you probably have a pretty good little ledge going on all along this side and then if you look really closely in here you've got a nice little point that comes over right around in here a nice little ditch area right in here as well so you know just looking right on those little corners those that you find those are always going to be good places to look and then as we come down here we're getting close to scouts cove finally see a couple more points here this is a really good point i don't know what's going on back here but man that looks like it gets it gets it drops pretty good right in around in this area so i fish this point but also check out this area right in here and back in here just because of the fact that it drops off so quick and then this little point too that's going to be a good good nice little point it's nice and flat up here that's clearly going to be a great place to top waters and stuff like that and then we're going to move back as we come back in here I've really got one spot mark, but a couple spots you might want to look at right in here, right where this dock is, um, just, I guess we'll say Southwest of that dock. That looks interesting. It kind of bends right in there, kind of hits up in there. You got a little point that comes out right in here. So looking right in here, and then obviously you're going to want to look right here. The Creek channel comes down and just buries itself right here on this point. So right in that spot. It's going to be a great spot to find some fish for sure and that actually covers us for lake bass trip let's go ahead and switch over i want to show you guys this on google earth really really quick and then we'll end the video to finish off this video let's go ahead and look at this from the google earth standpoint so here we are out on google earth there's not too much to look at here we've got a couple different ramps that are out here uh, i'll go ahead and click on these for you guys so you can see and we've got one here and one here and of course i always talk about fishing the boat ramps but that's not going to be a good thing to do here on this lake because there's only two of them and they're probably going to be pretty busy so uh at least you know where the ramps are though right so the next thing we'd want to look at then is just the offshore hot spots now of course if i zoom in here i'll show you guys you can see why i wasn't able to mark any type of laydowns or any type of rock because it's all just vegetation everywhere and there is hydrilla literally everywhere uh, everywhere you look there's hydrilla <laughs> and you can see here where I have these different marks where you can see the drops the humps everything that I put out there that we just went over on the Navy Onics mobile app you see that out there now you know some of this stuff looks pretty interesting when you take it from the Navy Onics app and you bring it over here into Google Earth like right here this point you can see the hydrilla is growing up but I guarantee you there's a nice ledge going on right there where we talked about that you can see it over here as well you can see that drop there can't see the ditch but you can see a lot of different things here now there is a little bit of rock here uh, on the dam the problem is it looks like there's hydrilla up close to the dam too i can't tell for sure but that might be the only opportunity you have to actually get into the rocks but it looks like there could be some kind of vegetation around that rock as well but here's everything here all on google earth i've got it all out, all out there on simplisticfishing.com make sure to go check it out and until next time i hope you catch your pb take it easy